my paintings are really just the focus on the single boat, but the um, liner cuts kind of put them into their environment. Uh, I, I did an apprenticeship boat building before I went to art school, so um, it's really drawing on on my experience when I was young. And when I got to art school, I realised that it was quite a unique experience um, being trained in the shipyard. And, uh, uh, you know, I've made it my subject matter ever since. It makes a good story. Yeah, I mean, my, my, my college prints were very allegorical, full of uh, myths and legends and very complex. But uh, uh, I think as I've got older, the, the subjects have got simpler. Um, you can, um, they're hopefully less contrived. <laughs> Joyce has been coming along one day a week for a couple of years now. And... Um, she, she first uh, started by really um, getting everything tidy because uh, I, I was quite messy. So she keeps me, keeps everything in order, and she's a, a trained graphic designer. So she has a love of typography and and printing, and uh, and so I'm putting buildings back and boats back that have long long disappeared. Um, I mean, I think a memory of a place is, um, it, it covers your whole lifetime and if not before your lifetime sometimes. And, um, you know, a photograph will be a snapshot of a second of a moment where I like to make my lino cuts have a, a bigger time span. I mean, some somebody said that my lino cuts are a compression of time and space. I rather like. I mean, this this one I haven't haven't printed for quite a long time. But when I first did it, it uh, sold 50 copies straight off at the Royal Academy, which was rather nice. A year's income in one go. One piece of work tends to lead to another. Um, you know, I just recently I've been doing the water in a different way, and you know, I like you know I like to ideas, things that work get sort of used again in the next picture and things that don't work get dropped and if one thing leads to another I, I, I don't think I've got a sort of grand plan of where the work's going or uh, we've done some big prints, we've got a, a five foot by four foot woodcut which we have to print by hand it takes two of us to, to print it um, and uh, we're, we're, we're always trying out little variations on, on the theme, but it keep coming back to line and cut printing really. Painting is standing up and using your whole body and often I'm listening to music um, when I'm painting and liner cutting is very much, you know, kind of sitting at a desk and I tend to listen to book tapes and radio plays and things. And it's nice, it's nice to sort of have the two activities and ideas move backwards and forwards between the two. I think I like I like the connection with traditional things. I mean, the traditional built boat, but doing a contemporary painting of traditional thing and working with machines that other people have used. You know, I mean, this this machine's only sort of 1950s, but this machine in the foreground's over 100 years old. This machine's you know, probably 150 years old. Yeah, just um, I like that idea of continuity with the past, and, and you know, re reusing you know knowledge and skills and ideas of the past. Well, there is an element of nostalgia, and uh, you know, maybe romantic nostalgia about some of the subject matter. Um, you know, I've done pictures of the shipyards, um, how they were in their heyday, and they've all disappeared now. This one of Cromer, you know, they have a very particular way of, of getting the boats up the beach. It's a, you know, quite a shallow beach, and it's very different to how they launch and uh, come ashore at Oldborough, which is a very steep beach. You know, those little, little things I like to kind of record.
within the picture. Um, I mean, I'm trying to do lots of things all at once, really. I'm trying to make a, you know, pleasing picture, but also have some research and historical content and a reinterpretation of that. So, you know, I'm, when, when you're spending months and months cutting a piece of lino, you, your, your thoughts and ideas um, go all over the place and uh, sometimes I have to tell myself to just keep it simple. Don't, you don't have to put everything in that picture but there's a temptation to do that. I think my panoramas I like to squash the perspective up so that the towns are a bit sort of boat shaped. Um, you know they're condensed and your eye is you know, the, the lovely thing about a boat is your eye is taken round and back and is held in the picture, and I try and do that with the panoramas. So, in a way, that is, yeah, if you want to put some more on. Uh, that is one, one sort of indirect link. Um, yeah, I don't know, I'll have to show you some of my paintings. Um, if you'd like to uh, come upstairs to the painting studio, I can show you. Most of my paintings are done up here. Um, the, uh, this is a couple of uh, pictures I'm working on at the moment. This is a uh, Falmouth uh, workboat that's being uh, uh, rebuilt over in Sonothers. And this is inside looking aft, they're putting a new transom. And this one is looking forward and they're putting a new stem in it. We've all put all these new floors and, you know, it'll be almost a new boat by the time it's finished. But, yes, you know. That's the most interesting part of a boat, the construction. Uh, yeah, this one is this one I've been sort of working on and off for you know a couple of years. Um, when I was a student, I did a painting about the uh, Solidarnos in in the shipyards in Poland, and uh, it, uh, it, I, I kind of felt a bit guilty that I hadn't really tackled the uh, shipbuilding on the Clyde, and uh, there was a great. Uh, uh, union uh, working in the 70s and Jimmy Reed and um, several other trade unionists took over the yard and they built four ships under union control um, so the format is very similar to my solidarity painting the cross but the cross is also uh, it was um, upper Clyde shipbuilders which were four yards that were brought together to try and make them pay um, which was a, in, in their symbol was a cross. And this is the sort of heyday of great liner building in Brown's yard in the 20s and, and before really. And this is um, part of the new aircraft carrier that's being built at the moment. Um, uh, the Queen Elizabeth class aircraft carrier, which is um, employing 10,000 men in four yards, four or five yards around the whole country. And that's being built in the yard that these people saved. Um, so this is my sort of tribute to um, Jimmy Reed and the Upper Clyde shipbuilders. Jimmy Reed gave the most fantastic speech about alienation and how you know the biggest asset this country has got is its people. And this was just when North Sea oil was coming in and, and people were being laid off and and you know there's even more unemployed now than there was then. In a way it's sort of drawing on my shipbuilding past and you know it's it's where I come from, it's the experience I've had. Um, you know I, I started in 72 um, while this uh, dispute was going on and I can remember the three-day week when there was only enough power in the country to for people to work three days a week. Um, so it's sort of, you know, drawing on a lot of things that are resonant for me. I think, um, I mean, up to recently, my sort of single boat paintings have, have been stripped right back of than any narrative, and it's only my liner cuts that have had a story or a narrative to them. Um, and this one, you know, I haven't uh, taken on anything as, as ambitious as this for a long time. And, you know, this is quite a test for me. I haven't painted figures for um, quite a while. Um, so I'm not sure quite how it's going to turn out. It's just something I really wanted to do. And we'll see what it's like when it's finished. <laughs>